withstand oppression using three psychological methods. Um, oops, where's my button here? There, here's Harriet. Denial, accommodation, and consent. So if they had but known they were slaves. Anyone on the receiving end of domination learns early in life to stay in line or risk the consequences. And those consequences only have to be applied once in a while to be effective. From that point forward, the traumatized psyche will police itself. Um, we have a saying in the Better Women's Movement, one beating a year will keep a woman down. So once in a while is all it takes. Any show of resistance is met on a continuum that starts with derision, social derision, all the way across to violence, you know, including murder. Um, and that's how oppression works. Um, we end up consenting. But resistance does happen somehow. Despite everything, people will insist on their humanity. So here's Tank Man. I love this. I mean, we still don't know this man's name. We don't know if he's alive, but he did this. You know? He was killed. They're pretty sure he's killed. Because he was pulled out of the street, but they don't know whether it was by police or whether it was by other citizens well, who were trying to yeah. save him because they were like, he's going to get murdered. And so they yeah, dragged well, him out. Yeah. Killed. killed, yeah. It's a big mystery. Like, it's still, it's, we're not quite sure what happened to him in the end. But he said, over my dead body. I mean, it's quite clear. Um, and frankly, this is what we all need to be doing, right, in one way or another. Um, so the final difference here uh, between, I keep hitting the wrong button. I'm so sorry. The final difference um, is the approach to justice. And with power being invisible on the, the liberal side, justice is therefore served by adhering to these moral principles um, that are abstract. Now, for radicals, justice cannot be blind. All right? Domination will only be dismantled by taking away the rights of the powerful and redistributing it, those rights to the rest of us. So you're going to have to name the harm and then think up a specific redress and then go ahead and do it. Um, by having it be blind, um, it means that you're really only supporting the powers that be that are already in place. Um, you know, one really great example of this is um, there's a famous sex discrimination case. It was a class action suit against Sears and Roebuck. And um, women came forward, had a whole bunch of stories about how they were being denied promotions and whatnot in Sears. And um, this was heard by a federal court. And the federal court, and one of the problems was that women weren't getting maternity leave, and they said we're being discriminated against because we don't have maternity leave. The, one of the, and the court denied all their claims. Women, this was a huge loss. They lost this. Walmart's doing the same thing now. I mean, it's, it has not changed in 30 years, okay? But the, the part that gets you always is the federal, the federal judge then says, this is not discrimination against women because if men got pregnant too, they also would not have maternity leave. Okay? This is a federal judge. Okay? You could not find a more abstract principle. Right? If men got pregnant, men don't get pregnant. That's the point. <laughs> That's why it's discrimination against women. So, okay. um, so here we've been using these words like oppression. We haven't defined this yet. So if you did your readings, you will have come across Marilyn Fry, a system of interrelated forces and barriers, which reduce, immobilize, and mold people who belong to a certain group and affect their subordination to another group. Now that is radicalism in one elegant sentence. Um, oppression is not an attitude. It's about a system of power. Um, and one of the harms of that system is that it creates subordination in that group. So it, it creates that consent in the oppressed. Um, and the image that she uses is the birdcage. So if you're a liberal, you're only going to see sort of random bars they're not connected into that interrelated set, right? What keeps that bird in that cage is the fact that all those bars work together, okay? It's the interrelated forces and barriers. So if you're the liberal, why is that bird in that cage? Well, I don't know. There's nothing keeping that bird in that cage. You don't see the forces and barriers. Um, so it either has to be voluntary, the bird wants to be in the cage, or it's natural. Well, it's just that bird's nature to be in that cage. Um, so then we've got another word here we should talk about, which is subordination. And we got some very smart people who've come before us. <laughs> uh, this is Andrew Dworkin, Four Elements of Subordination. Hierarchy, group on top, group on the bottom. Of course, the people on the bottom have a lot fewer rights, resources, blah, blah. Objectification. So uh, some human beings are seen as less than human in whatever way. They are used as objects. They are bought and sold as objects. They are, you know, it's appropriate to treat them as objects. Submission. So here we go again. Uh, you have to submit in order to survive. And this is always the rock and the hard place right? that you're up against when you're being oppressed. Um, and so you're objectified. And because you then have to submit, that's used as proof that you, in fact, deserved that oppression or you're somehow made for that oppression. It doesn't hurt you when you oppress. But in fact, it's really just the only option you've got if essentially you don't want to die. 
Um, and then finally is violence. So of course, committed by the people on top against the people on the bottom is totally natural. In fact, they have a right to do it. It's when people start fighting up from the bottom that you've got trouble. So all four of these elements work together to create this like hermetically sealed world, um, psychologically and politically, where oppression is normalized and it's almost like as necessary as air for the whole society to function. So coming to political consciousness is not a painless task. To overcome that denial, the accommodation, the consent, it means facing the everyday normative cruelty in, of the society in which you live, in which millions of people are participating in this. A lot of them get direct benefits from it, other them get benefits as bystanders, but um, it's really hard to face that. It's also really hard to face your own collusion in your own oppression. It's not a fun moment. A friend of mine remembers um, her first, first person in her, in her uh, family who went to college, grew up in really extreme poverty, and her first year in college, um, she kind of had a mental breakdown, and it was over this, this one sentence. She said, I realized there were rich people and there were poor people, and there was a relationship between the two. Right? So that whole year was just coming to grips with that. Um, but knowledge of oppression starts from some kind of baseline recognition that subordination is always wrong, that oppression always hurts real people, and that we can do something about it. Um, and I, I would submit that that... Um, that knowledge and the skills that we acquire in analyzing you know, the situation that we're in can be emotionally freeing, certainly intellectually freeing, and ultimately spirit spiritually freeing. I mean, it can give us the kind of courage that we need to go forward. So we got to do it. Mm -hmm.